Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Upper Paleolithic Origins of Greek Myths at this year's International Symposium and Exhibition on Mythology. My name is Bernie Taylor, and my research explores a deep root to mankind's creative capacity by looking at how hunter-gatherers viewed their cosmos through the study of Upper Paleolithic cave art. In this presentation, we will travel back in time to the ancient Greeks to see what they saw and perhaps think what they thought. When we think of Greek mythology, great heroes such as Hercules, Orion, and Perseus come to mind, extraordinary characters who face unsurmountable challenges, which they accomplish with the assistance of the gods. When looking closer at the great feats of these heroes, we find hints of early animistic and shamanistic traditions. Hercules, in his twelfth and finer labor, for example, travels to the underworld, which is the domain of the shaman. Hercules is aided by the centaur Chiron, which is found among shaman who transform into so as to take on the strength of a horse. These are not the great mental thoughts of people who brought us geometry, mechanical devices, and a scientific view of the world. I believe that to better understand the Greek heroes, we need to travel deeper in time, tens of thousands of years before the ancients, when animism was the dominant belief system. Our earliest records of these animistic beliefs are in art that we find in the upper Paleolithic caves of Europe and Indonesia. Here in Monte El Castillo on the Iberian Peninsula are some of the oldest artworks in the world. Where on the 10 meter across panel called the Gower of Discs, there are more than 80 red discs that are on average about the size of the palm of your hand. One disc among them has been dated to about 34,000 years old. On this panel, we find an archetypal teacher and apprentice. Note the wide interested eyes of the apprentice and how the teacher speaks into his ear. Let's listen in. On the shoulder of the teacher is a fledgling golden eagle that stands about a foot tall. This is roughly a mid to late time period for the young eagle. There's also this mass cosmic man whose left leg and right arm are raised. The right hand holds what appears to be an egg. His left arm has a feathered texture. We can take a closer look at the mask of the cosmic man. Note that he has one eye on the left side of his face and the right is the beak of an eagle. One can see the impression of a nose below the mask and what appears to be a mouth and teeth above a dropped chin. When we turn our head sideways, the teacher and the fledgling golden eagle transform into the mask of the cosmic man. See how the artist used the juvenile eagle to form the beak of the cosmic man's mask? This is artistic genius. On this panel, we find a speckled mare. She appears to be leaping with her head turned away from us as if agitated. In this deep cave, our cosmic man merges with the speckled mare on his journey of spiritual transformation and becomes a centaur. On our journey, we encounter a mother Iberian lynx with a slightly tipped head and whose kitten pushes up against her ruff. This is a mid-June time period based on the stage of the kitten and is consistent with that of the fledgling eagle. We encounter another transformation where a mask is put on to become a birdman or avionoid. Note that our hero's left hand is feathered and behind his back. This is the same feathered left hand of the cosmic man. They are the same character. We enter a marine environment where we encounter a giant crab lurking under a ledge. There is a spinning bottlenose dolphin. Note that the dolphin is depicted above the surf. Our hero merges with the dolphin to become a merman who is reminiscent of the shape-shifting old man of the sea in the Hercules myth. We find our hero appearing to be in the air. How does he elevate above the water? The artist reveals that the dolphin assists him. In this image, our hero wears a red pelt. We may be getting ahead of ourselves in this story. We reach the opposite shore, which is now Western North Africa, to be greeted by a monk seal, where there is a woman in distress. See her sunken chin and cheeks, sorrowful eyes, and long braided hair accentuated by the red discs. The ancient Greeks may have projected her story both as Andromeda, chained to a rock on the shore and under threat by the monster Cetus, and the beautiful Amphrodite, who receives a message from the dolphin Delphinus. There is a Spitzish dog with its tail flopped forwards. We encounter a Barbary ape, which is indigenous to the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. 
and a juvenile giraffe who hides her neck behind her mother's. The giraffe is also indigenous to Africa. There is an elephant drinking water from a pool and another with a raised trunk, or so it seems. Turn your head sideways and you will see that they are the same elephant. The artist transformed from the same ear and trunk. Our hero enters and swims in the pool. See his head and arms freestyle swimming. He encounters the elephant in the pool. The artist depicted an aerial view of the elephant in water with her floating ears. Our hero rises again, but this time walks up a hill at the top of the panel where he encounters a lion being licked by a lioness. Our hero is unsure about whether he should approach them. Is he ready to battle the apex terrestrial predator? There is an inner conflict, the crisis moment where our hero struggles with himself in a different time and place. Perhaps this is an upper pelvic version of the ghost of Christmas past. The lion takes the initiative and paws our hero to the ground. The hero prevails, becoming the apex predator. As a symbol of that strength, he wears the red spotted pelt. This depicted myth is, of course, connected to that of Hercules, who slays the Nemean lion in a deep cave and takes home the bloody pelt as evidence. We continue on to find a mother bear watching her cubs climb a tree for safety, and then encounter a large crocodile who is protecting her young. In my image titled Thrash by a Crocodile, one has to wonder if the hero is fighting with the mother crocodile or is he somehow learning from her? He appears to stay away from her sharp teeth the hero is in the place of the previously depicted striped reptile. There's an ostrich that seems stressed about something. When first working on the ostrich, I didn't see the legs and thought that the bird looked a lot like a floating swan. Remember the idea. We will return to it later. There's another bird, the now extinct great auk, which indicates we have returned to a marine environment and are homeward bound. On the journey home, we see a breaching humpback whale. Note that the whale is depicted above the surf in the same manner as the dolphin. Our hero rides home in the belly of the whale that is reminiscent of the biblical Jonah and the whale. So that our great epic story can be passed down to a new apprentice by the now fully integrated wise men teacher. On this journey, we have walked and swam from Cantabria, Spain to Jabotobacal, Morocco, over about 30 days and roughly 1,700 kilometers in each direction. Jebotobokal is the highest mountain in North Africa and was called Atlas by people in the ancient world. This is the mountain that Hercules and Perseus climbed and we find Barbary apes today in their native environment. This journey was not just across land in the Strait of Gibraltar. We can turn back time to mid-June some 35,000 years ago with astronomical software to see these depicted human and animal beings on the gallery of disks in the night sky as constellations. We can recognize many of them in the ancient Greek astronomical record from Claudius Ptolemy. Traveling from north to south at the top of the panel, we have the mass cosmic man who is the constellation Hercules. The eagle that he merges with is Agila. The eagle also merges with the horse to give us Pegasus wings. In that great astronomical expanse we call the sea is the bottomless dolphin Pisces, which is swimming south. On the southern shore is the seal, which the Greeks found to be the monster Cetus. Near to the southern limit on this image, our hero Orion is accompanied by the spitious dog that is Canis Major. There is the elephant whose head is Aruga and the tusks are Taurus. The ancients substituted a horned bull for a tusked elephant. A strong swimmer is the constellation Perseus, who swims along the Milky Way. Hercules, Orion, and Perseus are the same character on this hero's journey, with each depicting the hero at different stages of the journey from north to south and back north again. See how Orion has replaced Hercules as a slayer than Nemean lion. They look different because the constellations are shaped differently. The eyes of the Barbary ape are the twin stars Castor and Pollux in the constellation Gemini. The constellation Leo is the Nemean lion in Greek mythology. The bears are Ursa Major oriented as they were in the summer months. The crocodile is Draco and from where dragons come from. This depicted crocodile has a length of 15 meters, which surely makes it as threatening as any dragon in Game of Thrones. How many myths have a dragon as the villain? Is this depiction the root of them all? 
the ostrich is cygnus. Remember that an ostrich without legs looks a lot like a floating swan. If you have never seen an ostrich or missed the legs on the panel, this bird could be interpreted as a swan. The whale is Pisces traveling north and in the opposite direction of the dolphin. Both the dolphin and whale were both depicted out of the water so that they could be found in the marine environment and in the night sky. These Greek heroes appear to have the same upper Paleolithic root. The support for this hypothesis may be found in the Greek heroes Hercules, Orion, and Perseus, who we found as the same hero on the Gallery of Dis. The ancient Greeks and their predecessors appear to have drawn from one great upper Paleolithic myth and interpreted one hero as different characters of the same archetype. In these eternal myths of great heroes who face unsurmountable challenges on a journey that both begins and ends each year. In a place and time where the terrestrial, celestial, and underworld realms meet. Where everything is possible when we travel deep into the cave of the human imagination. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak at this year's International Symposium and Exhibition on Mythology. More on my work can be found at these sites. I am always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my work to community and academic audiences.